Sorry. Six thirty-one. As you know, we've been in executive session um, discussing with a finalist for the position of town administrator. Um, I will tell you that we're very close to having a deal, but we um, are not going to be able to finalize it tonight. Uh, but we're hopeful in the next few days we'll be able to have a, a final deal. We need a good negotiator for the town. We need a good, yeah. <laughs> um, was I, is there anything else to say about that, you guys? Uh, I had a list. I, I have a motion to make. Please. <laughs> um, to that end, I would make a motion to authorize Ann Winchester to enter into a contract with the finalist candidate for town administrator to include the parameters which we've all agreed to and to sign a contract with that individual. I would, can, can I just, a friendly yeah. amendment? Instead of parameters, I'd say provisions because they're very specific yeah, provisions we agreed to. Will you email me that text? I will do that. I, I'm doing it this way tonight. <laughs> oh, I'll email you that along with the earlier details. Anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So I'm sorry, I wish we had a little more to report right now, but we'll have lots more to talk about at the next meeting. <laughs> um, has there, everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Mm -hmm. Everybody happy with them? Is that, how do you spell uh, Daniel Keeney's last name? K-E-N-E-Y. It is K E E N E Y. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Then I do not have any corrections. Then would you like to move the minutes? <laughs> um, I move we approve the minutes of October 9th, October 9th. 2023. All right. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Board orders are coming around. Mm -hmm. Jamie, I think, has them. Um, so the Curtis Pond handrail has been installed. It, I've seen pictures of it. It looks beautiful. I announced in here, uh, thanks to Linda Schultz, uh, Sheets, and then um, I learned from his wife that our very own quiet man <laughs> over in the corner there also had a lot to do with it, and I didn't realize it. John spent a lot of time helping to design it and designed the two little frogs that are sitting on the rail. I didn't design them, I donated them. Is this something you had lying around? John, is this just something you had lying around? No, no, I got them on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, John. So, yeah. Thank you. And has anybody seen it other than John? No. Oh, Jamie. Actually, oh, been down. This, the pictures were nice. Yeah, the pictures were great. Um, so you all know about the energy uh, municipal energy resilience grant, Barbara. Do we have a copy of that to sign? It's right there. That's this? It, right there. Oh, this is a memorandum of agreement. Oh, with That's BGS. Agreement. Oh, this is it. Okay. Um, this is um, a, a grant to do what? Oh, to do an energy audit of the town, and possibly then, and then after that, we'll be eligible for an implementation grant. That's right. Yeah. This is step one, the four thousand dollars. This is step two. This is um, when they first advertised it. They said there'd be a first grant for a thousand dollars, and then the second one for four thousand, and then the next one with an upper limit of five hundred thousand. Uh, turns out that there's really no money changing hands for the second part. They're just going to send a technician, an individual, who will do the the assessments. Mm -hmm. When do that expect? Do you expect that to be, Scott? They are moving so slow on this; it's almost impossible to. You know, but it should be coming up, and John and I are in touch with. Um, so we'll both be here when they come. And, uh, but it could be. I don't know. I don't know if they haven't. Okay. They're they're going by. Uh, they're trying to cluster towns together, so they'll send somebody from efficiency Vermont in a car to the Northeast Kingdom and do four times and then but they don't have a schedule. But it's coming and we got it, we're eligible. I had asked for an assessment of the garage, but I didn't have enough information about it to get them to 
approve us for that. So if we want to do that, we'll have to do it on our own. Okay. Or maybe it'll come around again. Yeah. So do I thank John for this also? Or oh, yes. <laughs> so you had a lot to do with John for this. And for that. Well, I know. <laughs> okay. So yeah, thanks, yeah. guys. So I would entertain a motion to authorize. It looks like they want me to, or one of us to sign it on behalf of the municipality. I make a motion that we authorize you to sign it on behalf of one town. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'll finish that later. Thank you. Now, public comment. Anybody have anything that's not on the agenda that they would like to bring up right now? Okay, that'll keep us on schedule. Um, yeah, apparently I got some things wrong in reporting this um, Maple Corner Community Store board president, John Rosenblau, is, is here. Oh, sorry. Um, so, let's see. We got a, um, we bought a generator for the town hall, as you all know, and it turned out that the switch was uh, needed to be swapped out. So we now, uh, the town, have a switch. That, and it happens that the Maple Corner, well, why don't you tell us what you would like to use it for, John? Well, we're, we're contemplating, because we've had two power failures in less than a year, where actually Nancy and Artie said that they, I think Jamie told me that Nancy and Ernie had had no more than two hours during the a power failure during the time they were owning the store. We've had two power, power failures of way more than two hours in less than a year. Um, and we're contemplating, rather than um, relying on Bill Powell to, to bring his generator down uh, <laughs> and uh, plug in and Jamie to s string extension cords all around the building, we're actually thinking about that we could use a uh, generator switch and uh, have that plugged in um, directly to a generator and we'll buy our own generator. Um, the, the agenda stated that we were used, ready to use it right away. Um, actually, it's probably not till January or February when we'll actually be ready to use it. And, and, um, and um, the, uh, the agenda said it was worth $350. It's actually advertised on eBay right now for $249 used. Um, what I would propose is that if you want to uh, give it to the Maple Corner Community Store, we would take it. And if the East Callis store uh, decided that they were ready to use it before we were, we'd give it to them. Um, and that way, just to make it so that it's the first store that needs it. Um, and um, and that, that's, I guess, what I'll propose. Um, I'm not really authorized at the moment to, to purchase it. Um, and I'm, you know, I, I once again wouldn't be 100% sure that, you know, until an electrician comes and looks at our system, that it's exactly the right thing for what we want to do. But um, it looks like it could be useful. And so, if you want to donate it to one of the community stores, um, you can either hold it on, on to it until one of them is ready to put it, install it, or you can, um, or you could uh, give it to us, and we'll hold on to it. And if the uh, East Gallus store needs it first, then we'll give it to it. Anybody other than Jamie have a comment? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, let me ask the board first, Jan, and then I'll ask. Anybody? Question? Comment? Okay, Jan has something to say. Well, um, as the treasurer of East Calus Community Trust and uh -huh. the store, um, we aren't going to have a backup generator for quite a while. So I would take us totally out of this within the, you know, if we just started looking at the possibility and uh, it's a little more difficult in an all energy efficient building. Mm -hmm. And we have, Do you have storage for the generator, number one. Um, we have to figure that out and a few other things. So it, it, it's going to be a longer process to finding a generator if we have one. Mm -hmm. So I would. 
simply ship it off to a corner. <laughs> do you have energy storage? No, we do not. We did an evaluation from Green Mountain Power as to how many times they were out, two hours or more. Mm -hmm. And the documentation and the data behind it showed that it really a, a generator of the amount of money that would be required for that building is probably not, uh, I don't know, it, 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 it would be difficult. So we made an, an initial early decision to not look for a generator. Now the store operator, of course, is a little concerned, but all of her new equipment are good for 48 hours worth of refrigeration and freezer stuff. Um, it would be a major storm that would be down for 48 hours, we think, but, and we have to consider the three apartments above it. So um, the range of the price that we've been given from two companies is pretty astronomical and we don't have the funds anyway right now, and we wouldn't know where to put it. Apparently GMP is giving away storage, uh, energy storage, so, or they're starting to do that, so I'm maybe batteries. maybe the yeah. store could be yeah, a candidate for that. We're looking into the batteries, but again, we'll be, where, where can we place them? Was that they're pretty compact. Hmm? Was that finalized? I, I read that they were, they were soliciting funding. I didn't know whether or not they had finally got that through. I don't think it's finalized, but um, it just strikes me that in a, in a net zero building, you know, rather than put a fossil fuel generator on it, it might not be a replacement, but, but storage, energy storage, especially given the coolers can be good for two days um, <coughs> when you have three apartments. But anyway, so it's something to keep an eye yeah, on with well, GMP. We are, um, they can go in a garage. Aware of that. Uh, don't know about that yet. <laughs> they, they could, but uh, if there's other purposes going in through the garage. Um, and so, yeah, it's kind of an interesting phenomenon. And interestingly enough, uh, Jess's concern is not with the refrigeration in the freezer. Her interest is keeping the deli operating, the inve infection, the infection, the convection ovens, and the stove top, whatever you call those things now. Um, she's more concerned about keeping the deli open in the case of things, so she can keep producing the food. Hmm. Yeah. More than the refrigeration idea. And, and that is something that just came out in the last week or so. So, so it's one of those ongoing um, things. Okay. So um, the question is, would we like to give this um, switch to the Maple Corner Community Store? As opposed to selling it. Well, apparently we could sell it on eBay for two fifty, dollars maybe. Where are you going to get? There's two of them on there now. I think those are our choices. And, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, if you, if you really want to sell it, you can, I, can, I can figure out what, you know, what we pay for it, but, but not three fifty. dollars What paid for it in the first place? I, I don't know. Was it in the generator that they bought, or was it in a former generator? John, do you know that? With the building. It was part of the electrical contract when this building was done. We uh, hadn't been a decision on the generator, but we knew that one was coming. So we had an automatic transfer switch installed. And then Brookfield Service didn't like it. They wanted a Kohler brand mm -hmm. transfer switch and not the one we had. So it was taken out and the town paid for a new Kohler switch. And the one they took out, I guess, is in Nick Emlin's garage right now. So, I mean, similarly, we're not 100% sure an electrician will tell us that, too. Um, although Bill Powell says that it looks like a switch that would work for us. It um, would. I mean, it's a generic switch. It's a generic. So, I mean, Bill Powell thinks it's, it'll work for us. So, that, that's clear. Um, we're still not sure whether we want to put in a generator like the one the town has so that we could run the whole building. It's similar, similar to these Calis dilemma. So we could run the whole building, or or whether we're going to buy, you know, a six thousand dollar generator that can just keep 
keep uh, essential things like the refrigeration um, going and the heat going. Um, so that's, we're still, we haven't figured that out yet. So it's a little bit early for us to start putting money down onto, on, if you want to just wait, if you really want to get money for it, you could hold on to it and, and we could set the price at 250. Is it? Well, I'm not opposed to, I just, if we do that and it works for you, fantastic. I just want to be mindful that we have the East Cali, you know, that we share our resources with our two stores. So, I know y'all don't need it, but yeah. for future. Okay. Thank you. I mean, also, you know, if, if, um, <laughs> if Memorial Hall wanted to get a generator and got to it sooner than us, I mean, we can just include all the public. Mm -hmm. you know, organizations, <laughs> their buildings in this. Uh, we don't want to, yeah. you know, make this seem like we're asking for this special thing from the town. Uh, you that, know, it could scary. be saved for whoever the first, you know, public mm -hmm. building that wants it would be. Okay. Jordan, did you want to say something? I was just curious, is it, is it like a, a transfer switch that uh, transfers the entire circuit pan? Uh, circuit board over or is it uh, like a key circuit switch that only has a whole building it's the whole building switch. yeah it's 200 amps so i guess that's that's right i guess it could do the whole build the whole service yeah um and the, the question is whether we want to buy a generator that can do 200 amps or whether we're going to buy just a little generator that can do essential services so yeah we, we could hook it up either way according to bill yeah, you, you can. There's there's a couple of ways to go at it. We just put one in uh, at our house, and it's a key circuit, so it's a second like circuit right. breaker. But I, that, we don't need to get into the semantics. I'd say um, I, if we need to, we could make a motion uh, to just kind of list the specifications of it, and whoever the first organization or building within the community that has a need for it that fits within their specs, then we should we should put it to use somewhere in the community if it wasn't going to satisfy here, and we'll do that for the. Price of three ninety nine, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Is that for shipping and handling? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Barbara, I have a question. It seems I recall just a couple of meetings ago that Ann said that they were wanting a new generator at the town garage. Is it possible that this transfer switch would be appropriate for what? might can be coming down the pipe for the garage well i think they have some sort of switch for the portable generator they currently have um and we haven't received that information back from brookfield but we're actually looking to apply for a grant under fema to support municipal buildings staying open and working during natural disasters so mm -hmm. Hopefully we can get it funded, but thank you for thinking of the garage. So uh, I think we're overthinking this a bit. I, I like Jordan's suggestion about it'll be available to you if you need it. Does that work? And meanwhile, uh, we'll keep it in Nick's garage. That seems fine. I think that's, that's great. Um, and if somebody else asks for it first, some public building, um, they get first dibs. Yeah. Does that work? That totally makes sense to me. What do you guys think? I don't think we need to vote. Do we need to vote on that? Nah, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> ah, and now the fun part. We get to talk to you guys about your budgets and your plans and hopes for the future. Jane, you want to come talk to us about the Planning Commission? Can I come up or can I talk? You, whatever makes you comfortable. I feel comfortable here. Mm -hmm. If you Go can ahead. hear me, I'll just stay here. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, there's not many changes to the planning budget. Yeah. Um, I think my memo and everything else kind of documents it. Um, the request is we've never had, we haven't really ever had an assistant. We thought we were going to and we didn't. And planning really is not in charge of maps. So we're asking to have both of those items just removed from the planning budget um, because we don't do them. Um, keeping education and training the same, uh, very few of us have gone to any um, session um, that's been out there. And I, you know, we may, some people might in the future, so we just kept it there. Um, expenses, I moved up to 750. Uh, I think I did that, I'm trying to remember, in part because 
we may have some mailing um, and a few things relative to the town plan, um, advertising, and possible printing of the um, helpfully approved regulations. Um, I don't know. Jeremy printed out the town plan, and I don't know whether that comes out of a town budget or whether that came out of a planning commission budget, but certainly like people like the DRB and everything are, are going to want hard copy of the new regulations. So whether that comes out of our budget or some other town budget, I don't know. Anyway, I, that's why I made it 750. And then um, the ongoing um, contribution to our reserve fund. I would like that to be 5,000, but I know that's a ridiculous request this year, so I kept this it. This year it's going to be a, a hard sell. The way we had agreed. <laughs> so that's the budget, so which is let me, let me just ask you, Tegan, I seem to remember that when I wanted a copy, when I was on the DRB, Jeremy just got me one, and he must have taken it out of his budget. Do you know anything about that? Uh, Where it should come from? No, this hasn't come up yet, but I would talk to Sandra, because she, she can find all the line items, although Barbara might know she's waiting Yeah, we, we printed out 10 copies of that spiral bound and just have them on hand, but I don't know which budget it came out of. Okay. So that's, that's a standard question if you okay. really want to know where it comes from. Thank you. Any questions on Sandra's, um, Barb, Jan's Jan. proposal? <laughs> <laughs> I think though, yeah. oh wait, if there's no other questions, John and I have a proposal here. Okay, why don't you do that? Pardon? Go ahead. Okay. Um, relative to the maps, um, John and um, Vicki and I met with the, uh, Franco from G CAI Technologies, who gave us a demonstration of a wonderful interactive map that would replace the current interactive map that we have online. Um, our recommendation is we'd like to have that gentleman come in and do a demo for you of what that map can do. Um, he also mentioned that the town administrator, he's had town, towns that have town administrators, that town administrator has that map up every day, all day long, because of all of the data, the way it's arranged can be, can be done. Uh, somebody comes in and says they want to know who the letters are on their property. They just can hit a couple clicks and man, everything comes up. Here's the abutters, names, addresses, everything. And it's just, it's kind of, it was most amazing to see the value of that kind of map. So we don't necessarily want it in next year's budget. We would like to use it in this year's budget. And we talked to Sandra, who happened to see us, and. And Tegan was there, and Barbara was there on the day that he was there. And she thinks that because um, more, the zoning administrator would use it, planning would use it, the listers would use it, the, hopefully the future town administrator would use it, the town clerk would probably use it. He said the road crew, too, with the culverts. Eventually, there's a way for the culverts to be on the map for the, if, if the road commission would use, use the computers to do that. Uh, there's one town that actually put the dog license information on the map, so they knew which property had which dog. And um, we joked and said maybe the horses should be on there, but we, that was just an internal dog. Um, anyway, um, it, so I mean, it's, it, it's an expansive, it's like it's not just used for one department, it's used townwide. And so Sandra felt that it could come under miscellaneous or possibly um, even use the reserve fund, uh, some of the money, the, the amount is not that much, $6,000 year one, or uh, $6,500 year one. Um, if we sign a three-year contract, there's other things, I mean, you can amortize things out. But Sandra's thought was that amount of money could come out of the reappraisal fund. So Sandra had ideas of how to um, put this into the fiscal 24 budget, not necessarily for the fiscal 25 budget. And uh, we're making that pitch. I know you're in the budget for next year, but maybe 
January you'd like to see this or something. I don't know. John Hawk. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we uh, the map right now is currently hosted by and it's supposed to be maintained by Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. I don't believe they've done anything in a couple of years. Um, you click on a parcel, you get out-of-date owner information. Um, this, one of the nice things about what we're looking at now is that the listers can be responsible for making sure that the, the map is constantly updated with new information for this, with respect to owners, even, even subdivisions. The property is subdivided, then that information can now be viewed on the map before a year passes. Um, this, this kind of thing where the, the town would maintain that data, uh, some from our regional planning said it was unlikely that, that could, they could do that. What's more is when I asked them, well, what can you give us that compares to what CAA offered, he had an opportunity to call back and respond and I haven't heard anything. I think the answer is they can't. They can't compete with this. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe because they have some contractual obligation with ESRI, who provides the the template for the for the map we're using now. This uh, this data is uh, it's the basic GIS data that's available on the geo portal, geo data portal. But uh, then the town grant list goes into it. Deeds can go into it. Waterbury uses the same folks, tax bills. You click on a parcel, you want to see what the tax bill was for that parcel. Mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting that for Callis, but what it can do is, is pretty amazing. Um, it occurred to me that it could, pr it could probably be used to auto-populate an online zoning permit application. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just great. What, what does that mean, auto-populate a permit yeah, application? Yeah, you click on your parcel and you want to, you want to apply for a building permit for it. That stuff's put in abutting property owners mm. could could just be put in without thinking about it. Right, um, and it has download capability, so we could have certain things from the deeds or certain um, property transfers coming in, which would be very helpful between the April and July round <laughs> before we had to issue our bills. Um, there's a lot of uh, other information, and I think the other positive thing is for the we already hire somebody for our parcel maps. We keep her, and she already works with CAI at interchanging that data, so there's already an exchange of data going on with our existing parcel map. Or, um, I'm sorry, CAI, what's, what's that? CAI Technologies is the name of the company. Yeah. Oh, that would sell us this map. They're, they're the new map okay. we're looking at. Cartographic Associates used to be their name, then they rebranded themselves to CAI Axios. Okay, and we're already working with, or some, who's already working with? We work with uh, Christine Chamberlain, Chamberlain uh, for the parcel maps. Right. And she's already got... Um, She'd continue to provide the maps. Um, parcel maps. Parcel maps. And I already reached out to her. The uh, We have some surrounding communities. We have uh, Waterbury, it's not really close by. But Hardwick East and, and East Montpelier both use CAI. You go into East Montpelier and zoom in on a parcel, it'll actually give you parcel line lengths. Not deeded lengths, but it'll take give you a measurement of what the drawn line on the map is. That's pretty nice for just getting a ballpark idea of where things are. And then as far as the data, it's whatever we want. We get out all the wetlands, uh, we get deer, whatever. Any, any of the information that's available on the uh, on these maps. Yeah, on these maps could be on the uh, could be on this map. Are they transferable? Uh, so the time that that we've put into these maps, would you be able to transfer those over? Well, this is just state data. I put okay. these together. Yeah, and 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 uh, uh, CAI could use the same data. I mean, yeah. we don't need everything, but but if we wanted amphibian crossings, we could get it. <laughs> But we can get that now on the biogeophysical map. Yeah, we could. Well, you could, but most um, we residents do. yeah. don't go there. Right. I don't even know if, what map most people And, and actually, I've never seen one site that has everything because we've got a lot of grand list data that we want to incorporate in this. The, the geographic data all comes from the state, um, with, a, with two exceptions. We, maybe we've got three things in this town where we generated our own data. Um, 
we've got our own wetlands, the natural resource inventory created our own wetland map. We've got the watershed protection for the East Montpelier Fire District. Um, there's something else, I forget what it is. Oh, uh, protected ridge lines. That also, that's not a state data piece. That's just something we generated ourselves. With well, the last select board did it. Mm -hmm. um, can the access to the information be the, the, uh, layered so that the public has, or whatever's published on the website totally. has uh, certain, certain totally. access to some, I mean, it, it's all public information, but you know, I think there, there could be a, a feeling that having all of that information on there publicly accessible through one portal could be a bit uh, squeamish. Um, well, like, like, and, the, like tax bills, there's right. no reason to put a tax bill. Sure, on right. Interactive map. <clears throat> so we can, we can separate, but we still use it as an interactive map for, for the website and as a resource for the community yeah. to help, I mean, I think a lot of that sounds really helpful for the community, but it does it sound like be. we would want yeah. to probably create a, a line somewhere between things that are being used in, uh, in house for managing tax bills and that sort of it thing. It's great. It, they can give us the one foot LIDAR contours. Oh, wow. So at that point, you can start seeing just from a map where, where maybe a proposal <clears throat> is exceeding the 16% slope, allowable slope. Um, yeah, it's great. I'm, I'm having a little trouble though. It seems to me I can get almost all that information you've talked about, I, I, admittedly not in one place, yeah. but between the Callis Town interactive map and the biogeophysical map and the planning commission maps, I can get all that information. And that's what I do right now. And that's, I don't, I don't know what the general public does. They might go to the interactive map and think that's all there is. I, I could say uh, from my personal experience of having to pull together resources from a lot of different map, map resources, you're then, you know, having to do, take your hand at, at, at overlaying things um, if you wanted to show overlays. So, you know, the, the overlay resources as a town, it's pretty nice that you have the stuff from the state. But if you wanted to overlay that with other either um, tax map information or adjoining neighbor information or anything like that, you have to stitch them together or pay somebody to stitch them together. So um, as, a, as a resource for the community to make sure that they're engaging in, I mean, it's easy to, um, to call out in development activity, but you know, I think one of the things that would be really nice to kind of hold the community accountable for is making sure that they're presenting accurate information when certain permits are coming up. And if we have a resource that makes it easier for them to provide that information for review during that process, um, I, I think that's a, that's a, a noble cause. Um, and then make sure it's all in, in, in one spot because it is, it's really tricky to make sure you have this bit of information from here, this bit of information from here, and it might be easy, easier for John to stitch those things together, but if you're trying to do that as, as an untrained lay person, um, it, it gets really challenging to do it without hiring professional help. I think also the fact that it can be updated regularly in-house is really big. I mean, I look at the interactive map and there's things on there that are, you know, often a year or two out of date, um, which can be really challenging if you're trying to use that for a project. And I, I think John's point about bringing in other resources <clears throat> into that, if we have a, something to your point, Jamie, that is more nimble and can be edited and maintained in-house, you know, adding adding culvert locations, signs that are in the sign inventory. It, it, it seems like we do a lot of work habitually and rework, and it's because we're in all of these different different systems. And, you know, I know there's a, there's a state system for managing and tracking culvert inventory, but that's in a different system. Um, and you then have to, if you want that in one location, you have to pull it in from another location. So having a resource that pulls in information that can be used in multiple departments throughout the town is uh, is hugely efficient, I think. I'm going to chime in that I also, I have the Cal's web map up all the time, but I'm also pulling up Google map, I'm pulling up the list of road numbers versus road names, and pulling up other maps and other lists and trying to overlay them, and I, my two cents is that it would definitely make my job easier also. I missed, I think you said throughout 
6,500 number, is that a, for first year? Is that's year How does one, the... That's year one, and then thereafter, it's a $3,000 per year maintenance, roughly speaking. And we do have a proposal, but we just wanted to bring this to you. Uh, as basic information, we can forward to you the proposal so that you can read it and, and have... And, and ask Franco to come and at your convenience when you want a demo. And is it um, is is the current cost of the maps hosting with CVRPC is that free? I don't know. We don't know. I think it's just our membership fee. I have never seen a line item for the mapping in here. It's just. The only mapping that we have is our parcel mapping, which is, I don't know what, what it is now, 3500 a year, I think, but... I don't know what but you but you're right, they don't keep it up to date. But, it's, yeah, but... It's off and out of the, date. Yeah, the issue at John's is it... Yeah. I think we pay CBR, something on Regional Planning Commission, a certain amount each year. year to join the club. We do. And that money includes something like 10 hours of support for the right. maps or something, <laughs> uh, something like that. But... Mm -hmm. They haven't done it in years. And, so. and it used to be when Pam, uh, what's her last name? DeAndrea. Pam DeAndrea was the, at the at the planning commission. I would ask her about when she was going to update. She said, I have to do it in July after the new budget because we've already used mm -hmm. this year's budget. So then she couldn't update it until whenever. And sometimes she didn't have time. So, um, and since she's left, there's been a big hole. Um, it's been very difficult to get it um, updated. Well, it sounds like we should invite them in for a demo. I'm not sure when. We may have to wait till January. So, and we've got the budget done. Well, you all might enjoy going to the East Montpelier site. They have both maps. They've got the one that we use based on the ESRI template, and then they've got the CAI one. And you can, so you can compare the two side by side. Or John can do that. No, we can't. <laughs> I don't know. But it's great. I mean, there must be, like, like the Google photo, the Google uh, Earth photo they used was mm -hmm. from August of this year, and it's up to date. Mm -hmm. the, the downside of waiting till January, which I agree we might have to, is if we get, if the 6,500 is fine in this budget, budget mm -hmm. we'll want the 3,000 work somewhere into next year's budget. Well, let me see if I can get it into... How long would they take? Would they spend half an hour with us? They could probably do it in half an hour. They could probably do it. If you told them they had half an hour, they'd find a way to do it. Yeah, and I think Franco would have to come in to set up. Well, unless he could No, no, just do it right on the TV. Yeah. yeah. Well, not next time, but yeah. what is oh, that interesting? It's a cool, fun thing. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Okay. CDPRC was budgeted for 2209. Okay. Yeah. And it's going to be, I called them, it's going to be the same this year. Uh, yeah, it's something yeah. like a dollar per person, and that's not right, but anyway. Okay. But does that sound right to you? Shall we, do you want to see a demo first, or do, do you, the rest of you feel you don't need to? <clears throat> I've played with the familiar one. I'd, I would like to see a, a demo and maybe just ask some other questions about layering and of, of data and data handling and that sort of thing. But um, so I, I think it would be, if it's not a full blown demo, it'd be nice to get um, a half an hour of time to look at things and ask questions yeah. in the next Can you guys month? send me the contact information? Yeah, I could try. Let's see how the budget goes. Maybe you could do a 5.30 demo before 6 o'clock starts. Oh, yeah, we're starting to get used to that now. <laughs> <laughs> the but 6 o'clock starts are already it? supposed to be irregular, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> now we're pushing for 5.30. You're already booked at 5.30 on the, on the 13th, remember that. Yeah. Why are we booked at 5? Isn't that the BCA meeting? Yeah. You guys probably got a little late tonight, but I could bring it up on that TV right now if you want. Well, I don't want to hold other people up. Maybe we could do it a little later. Let's see how fast we get through the other things. I'd like to hear where you are on the planning process. Are you ready to um, transfer the plan to us now? I'm sorry. What was the question? I'm, uh, I'm back on planning commission. Yeah. Are you ready to ask us, to, are you ready to transmit the plan to us for our hearing and 
hold, warning a, a vote. Isn't that where we were? You had a hearing last week. I thought the next step was you gave it to us. Is yeah, that right? We'll probably give it to you uh, the first week in November. Okay. So we'll and get it the next you meeting. You can hold your hearing whenever you've got a date. Yeah. Um, and as long as the time is between such that um, we can warn the hearing, have the hearing, and then you can put it as a warning on the March vote. Yeah. Um, or we, apparently we can now just adopt it. Yeah, I, that's apparently true. The law has changed. We can do that, but yeah, it, it, it's I think up we to vote. you. As I understood it, it would be up to the select board if they feel they want the town to vote on it. Fine, you can still go ahead and do it, but you have to vote that you want to do it that way and have an actual. Um, an actual motion to that effect. Um, but I, uh, okay. we've got, uh, tomorrow I'll be sending out all the final um, technical changes that our editor found and we corrected. And, uh, and um, uh, yeah, so I'm going to be sending it out to the Planning Commission for a final review. Okay. And ne what's next? What That's are you guys it. planning for the next year? We're taking time off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. Well, we, we, we have, we're plan? working on the town plan. We're trying to figure out what kind of questions we want to ask. And um, <laughs> Gabriella's husband has been very good at starting to write the education section of the town plan. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, we've assigned the various tricks. But, that's where we are. Uh, do you have anything in particular that you're going to focus on? The things that you feel need some time and changing? And I don't know. You don't know yet till you get into it? I can't answer that. Yeah. All right. And housing and, and natural resources, those are always mm -hmm. big deals. Well, that is one thing I've been thinking a lot about lately, the balance between housing and natural resources. There's a lot in the town plan about how there's supposed to be a balance. But having sat on the DRB, when you actually get down to it, you don't really have the tools. I don't actually know how you're supposed to do it. No. And, and with the new housing um, <coughs> legislation, and what we can do with accessory dwelling units. Um, our town doesn't have a lot of places to put in um, affordable housing, and we don't have the infrastructure. Uh, the commercial area, quote unquote, commercial area we would have are pretty much in River Quarter. We're not going to be building there. So um, when you look at what's available, for any kind of development, whether it's it, it's very sparse, and so my concern. I am not a professional planner. I'm just like, um, my concern for the town is I don't know where you're going to get future income. If you cannot build more houses, which is our taxable rate, and where where you get the money, from, I just don't know where it's going to come and how. We would do it if we promote uh, accessory dwelling units that people can put AC, ACUs. Um, a lot of people I know are concerned about short-term rentals, but um, that is an open mess in terms of legality. Um, you know, you've got people um, suing in Burlington, their new ordinance. Um, it took Duxbury two years to make their uh, short-term rental laws. So I mean, it's it, that's a very iffy thing. And I went out on um, Airbnb, and <laughs> there are a lot of people that have Airbnbs here in Dallas. We have a person that's got a five-bedroom house that they rent out for seven hundred bucks a night. So, and there's other people that do three hundred bucks a night. And so you know, there's there's all that and. It, could that become a source of income? I mean, how, what does it take to do a local option tax off of 
mm -hmm. Airbnbs because that becomes income to you, mm -hmm. to the town. I mean, you know what I'm saying. So, have we ever thought about anything like um, when, when, who was that woman we talked to? Michelle Peter Welsh's. Yeah. Michelle uh, Monroe. Monroe talked. Uh, she was at the CV Fiber thing, mm -hmm. and she, we we had a little chat with her about that. And she talked about, it was the Center for Rural Development, I think, right? Am I remembering this correctly? I'll need to go back and look. But how they can bring communities together to talk about those kinds of things. And she gave an example of... Oh, VCRD, um, Vermont Council on Rural Development, yes. the community visits. Yeah. She talked about how in, they did a project up in Montgomery where they determined that what they needed was a community septic because they couldn't afford a sewer. And how they did it, the community came together and they built a community septic and were able to get a bunch of affordable housings around that. So maybe we should be thinking about reaching out to some of those organizations. Yeah, if we can find them. There's, there's another person that um, came across my email that Melanie really would appreciate, a very professional um, planner at Landscape Architect. Um, there's a lot of other people out there that can facilitate um, community-wide meetings. So uh, we're struggling of who to find, what their cost is, mm -hmm. um, and that's really got to be the next step before you rewrite any, really write a town plan um, or rewrite a town plan, however you want to do it. I'd, I'd really encourage that. <laughs> yeah, if you could, if you have the energy. Yeah, and I guess I, short of, of soliciting that input, I guess that going through the town plan, I, I think most people in the community would agree that the aspirations within there are articulating things that we, we all largely as a community still support, but the, the, as Anne was saying, the path forward or even the impact of the ordinances to date are, are hard to suss out in there, and then that becomes what gets debate debated in, in the, at short of any particular guidance on specifically how to do something one way or the other. And, and one thing that, that strikes me is, um, is how old the data is that is in the town plan that are supporting that rationale. And, and you, you really you can't you don't get the sense that you're you're making decisions or on on real data that is from the last five years, ten years, or at this point even fifteen years, um, uh, and and so I'm curious whether or not there you know I think it's a, a resource like that, uh, like the mapping system, um, or more resources that that make the the data more readily available so that a, something like the town plan can be a more um, more of a living document that is what what have we built in the last year and and maybe not look at it as like just purely subdivisions or single unit houses but the ADU units I mean I think there's a really good conversation to be had around the the ADU units that you know, it, it's easy to fixate on them for short-term rental, but you know that's also passive income and a real way for somebody to afford living in a community that's already really expensive to live in, um, particularly as you enter into retirement um, and and want to protect that income um, when yeah. you're facing fixed income. So, but you know that that information is is missing from my perspective um, in in, a ta in the yeah. town plan. Um. I agree. I don't know how you write a town plan unless it is a living document. And the way these standards or this, the, the legalities of what we have to follow are X, Y, Z. Um, to come in and say, I'm going to have a living document and they want to see what you're writing on from now, from this point on. But I agree. Um, I have my personal viewpoint yeah. um, and uh, I don't wish to make that public. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I would yeah. love to keep going on this, but I want to give other people time. Um, and I appreciate, I mean, we, I and John and I both appreciate that. I mean, being on the planning mission is pretty um, challenging when you're writing a town plan. 
And that's why I plug with somebody. You know, we need young people. What, what is it? I don't want to be telling somebody what this town's going to do 10 years from now because I'm old. And I, you know, I'm, it, it's got to be somebody 40 or 50 that knows what they're going to, that there's going to be a future here. And what do they want? Do they, do they want co-generational housing units, which I think would be wonderful, but I don't know where you put it. Maybe if we had a good septic and water system, what's the grant? How many millions of dollars does that take? And so it's all kind of like, and I'm, like I said, I'm not a planner. We need to hire a professional planner if you want to do that. Yeah. But I appreciate it. And I appreciate your time. Sorry, we didn't, our intent wasn't to make you feel more tired than you were. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just good to have these discussions together once in a while. So. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Anything well, else? Well, I board? would make a motion, that, or I guess not, not a motion, but I would strongly support the, uh, the adding of that $5,000 in the reserve funds for that type of thing. I think we're going to face that when we get to the budget. Yeah. Or, or, or were you asking to take it out of this year's budget? N not out of this year's. I think what, yeah. it, what Jan was asking was to have it $5,000 to be contributed in this next fiscal year as yeah. opposed to stepping it down to 2500 so Well, yeah. what we'll so. do is we'll ask Sandra to put all those things into the budget, yeah. and then we're going to have a marathon night when we're just going to go yeah. through the whole thing with very sharp pencils, I imagine. I'm, I'm just making a, a public statement in support of the $5,000 for next okay. year's. <laughs> Okay. Shall we turn to uh, conservation now? Okay. Let me get up. Larry. I can't talk for the fact that I hear it all Thanks, guys. Um, it's in part we're going to go from relatively high tech stuff to relatively low tech stuff in this discussion, which I'm much more comfortable with, I confess. Um, <laughs> I'm starting out by doing something that every, everybody who, who talks about effective public speaking says never do, which is <laughs> hand out documents to people and then try to start talking. More <laughs> <laughs> so you gave us a whole bunch of they, did you want Yeah, those people? are just samples. Just samples. I'll collect whatever, and you, you can put them all back, and I'll take them all or keep them. Does anybody want. else want to see? You've all seen these, right? Yeah. yeah. OK. OK. Uh, a budget proposal, which I gather you have all seen. Um, I'll run through the uh, recurring things um, first, and then um, one, one of them um, has asterisks that get us to those uh, pamphlets. Um, and then go to the things that are sort of new on here. Um, the for a number of years now, we've had uh, money in the budget for recording secretary of wages. Um, mm -hmm. There was a, a brief and happy time um, when Katie Lane Carnes was uh, taking our minutes. Uh, and it's, I would say it's all been downhill from there, except that we're on a, on a rise right now because one of our new members, Paul Olander, has agreed to take the minutes, and he's doing a superb job um, far beyond the basics. Um, but um, if we could find um, competent, reliable stenographic help in the community, um, it would probably be good to use it instead of, some people are good at participating actively in a meeting and taking good notes at the same time. Some people, and I'm in that group, are hapless at it. So it's difficult, as you know, to be an active participant in a meeting and taking comprehensive yeah. minutes. So, uh, but, but Paul is doing that at the moment. Larry, where so, does the 600 number come from? What is that for? Uh, it's, it's been in the budget longer than I paid attention to what was in the budget. Um, but if you work it out uh, on some kind of an hourly basis, um, we, I mean, we have, uh, in theory, 12, monthly meetings a year plus an occasional um, additional meeting. Mm. Um, and so I guess that would work out to about $50 um, a session uh, to prepare for it, take the minutes, um, mm. uh, then get the minutes in decent shape through the two rounds of drafts and finals and, and doing the 
now they're in communication with the, uh, with the town's um, uh, technical expert who handles the website stuff. <clears throat> okay. um, but as I said, it's, it's, it's not been used for a number of, of years. Um, there was some, well, I don't even go down that road because it wasn't a decision that the, that the Conservation Commission made. Uh, so that's the first item. The second item, um, the education and training, that's also been in the budget, I think, probably for quite a long time. Um, it's rarely been used. Uh, occasionally, there, there are um, recurring annual events that are put on by the state or the Association of Vermont Conservation Commissions that have a fees uh, connected with attending, you know, and, and so that kind of education and training uh, is is possible, um, but it's, it's been relatively rare. We probably should be more active, frankly, uh, at that level than we have been, though. Um, the the green up, Jamie can probably talk to this more knowledgeably than I can. It just sort of showed up in, the, in our budget. Um, I, I, I'm assuming that it was just sort of sort of like what we may be talking about with the Lakes and Streams newsletter, but just looking for a place to house the budget, I don't know. Uh, but we don't actively, as a commission, participate in Green Up. We don't handle these funds. I assume if, they, if whoever is doing it needs them, somebody, um, the treasurer or somebody would come and take them out of that, that line. But right. I have no recollection of why they're placed here, we get a small green up grant from green up every year, which if we have expenses, I don't think we've actually used the green up budget from the town. In a, That's interesting. At least in the yeah, five we, or six years I've been coordinating it. We left it in because we assumed it was important to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you may have just found us 200 bucks. <laughs> that might have been for hundreds and hundreds of tires. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's what. I, that came out of something. That came out of the highway budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, the next item, which uh, hasn't been funded uh, for the last couple of years, but was prior, and we put it back in this year, is uh, conservation commission expenses, which would be other for things other than the education and training. Um, part of the rationale, I think, is that we hope to be a bit more active in. Um, outreach to uh, the community, to, to landowners. Uh, there's a whole raft of new, um, leg new not legislation, uh, yeah, new statutes that have been passed in the last mm, three or four years uh, that affect uh, landowners and their possibilities um, and that also put a, an obligation on the town to um, try to um, perhaps ratchet up the level of protection that's provided for interior forest blocks and connectivity blocks and those sorts of things. Um, and so I can foresee uh, the need for a, a more extensive public outreach than perhaps the Conservation Commission has done in, in recent years. Um, and potentially there could be you know, expenses involved with preparing materials um, for that sort of thing. Could that be also for, although you're asking for quite a lot more for this, yeah, I guess. Um, well, the, the proposal that, that we had here was to, to, to put additional money if, beyond what shows up on this formal document into the line of education and training, but it obviously I think it could probably go in either, either place if, if it were mm -hmm. um, approved. Um, the next item, a really important uh, Can one. I ask you another one yeah, about sure. that last one? Um, would that include any legal expenses if you were to consult an attorney, and do you have much occasion to do that? Uh, we don't. Okay. Um, in the past, I've not personally dealt with mm -hmm. situations in which the Conservation Commission um, had to be working with an attorney. Um, my Perhaps my assumption has always been that if we needed an attorney, we would go through the select board and you know make our case for one. Okay. 
the Conservation Fund. Um, this fairly limited document um, in terms of the time span it covers um, sort of makes it look like the FY24 budget jumped the, the, the um, amount put into the Conservation Fund from 5000 to 8000 But if you go back and look, I can't remember now how many. For a number of years, it was at 800, and the previous select board simply decided that you know that they weren't going to do it at that level. Uh, we're asking uh, and hoping that it can be restored. Um, probably many of you know, perhaps about some of these things more than I do, but the conservation fund over the years since it's uh, existed has played a vital role um, across a range of. Um, activities that result in uh, conserving land. Um, most recently, in, in most years, um, recently we've been a, uh, a small player who is working with a big player, uh, Vermont Land Trust and or the, the Housing and Conservation Board, because they usually are working in tandem, to um, obtain conservation easements uh, of various kinds that will um, uh, sort of maintain the status of, of valuable um, farmland as well as, um, as uh, forest land. In fact, the, the, its use for farmland in, in recent times has probably been more important. The Armstrong Farm was one of our most recent um, uses of the uh, conservation fund, as we were a, a small player with the Vermont Land Trust. How much did the town put into the Armstrong? Fund, uh, farm conservation fund. That's a good question. I, with a little trouble, I can maybe pull it up, okay. but I don't. I don't recall. It was probably in the vicinity of twenty thousand dollars. <throat> that's just a guess. The, oh. the, the the most recent use of the fund, and the one that really took it down, uh, was the support that the conservation fund uh, provided to the uh, Memorial Hall. Uh. And again. Relative to all the vast amounts of money that they were, well, I think that they were able to obtain, or more properly put, the vast amounts of money they were required to spend to, to get it to the point it is today. I think John Our wants to provide an answer. Did yeah, you know? I have a question oh. or, or a recommendation, I guess, on the conservation fund. Oh, when should we let Larry finish first? Well, I think what I'm hearing in your question and in his response is what would help the residents of the town would be if you could provide a list of what all the conservation mm -hmm. fund has spent in the last 10 years or whatever, however long mm -hmm. this from, from its origin, that's not hard. I've got it. Um, yeah, and, and I think that needs to be published as a reminder of what it is that conservation fund is for. I think right? We, we hear it in yeah. rumor. Okay, yeah, it went to Hooley Farm and it, you did something with something else and Memorial Hall. But I think it's nice to have it in black sure. and white. Did they get a report? In the, um, do you, does the yeah. Conservation Commission have a yeah. town report? An annual report yeah. that goes yeah. into the town Cause report. Because it'll probably fit in a table pretty neatly. Yeah, well, in the town I, report. I'm not sure. Uh, it's, we, the table that we have would take up a, a, a lot of space. I'm not sure. No, I'm talking about just a simple list region of region. what year and how much and what project. Exactly. Okay, well, that's, that's all our list is, but it's still, you know, it's that long, really. Uh, there are probably uh, between 10 and 15 projects on there, at least. Yeah. That's still a small table, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, well, I can, certainly, I can certainly do that, and uh, that's a good idea. Um, do you know roughly uh, what's in the fund now? Um, a little over $47,000. Um, we, we, we contributed. We can, the, the fund contributed $50,000 to Memorial Hall, uh, which went to them, I think, in two increments. Um, I was a little, per just speaking personally, I was a little uneasy about that request until it became clear to me that um, there is a significant issue and factor there about the, the shoreline on the pond that's on there, fairly, fairly extensive amount of shoreline. Um, on, on the property, and so uh, this was was seen by the conservation commission as a as a support for uh, a 
conservation issue, and that is maintenance and protection of the shoreline. They also have a small amount of woods, but I don't think anybody, they don't plan to do anything with it. And it uh, Eric Sorensen did a survey of it as a part of the process that they went through. Um, but I don't think anybody has any, at least that's, that's what uh, Rowan told me, that they don't have any plans to just leave it like it is. Um, okay. The, the, the next thing will, will get us into the first of two <coughs> sort of, well, one of them is, a, is an old... Actually, before we yes, move on, right. is there a housing fund? Does Calus have a housing fund? Uh, uh, Anybody know? Housing fund? To yeah. Do what? Well, like a conservation fund. You mean to help purchase housing? To if VHCB was doing something in Calus, oh, I see. And that there was a conservation, there was a conservation fund that would be used towards um, the, uh, you know, a small gesture on the part of the town. I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if we have a, a cordoned housing so. fund. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I'm certainly not aware. Of. Not that I know. I mean, I've so, worked with VHCB, at least indirectly, a lot, but it's all been on forest and farm. And this is, I know, a much larger conversation question, but I have often thought to myself in my head, theoretically, what, what if every town's conservation commission was a housing and conservation commission so that there was a built-in balance with, with that? Just a thought. We don't have to go into yeah, it right now. That might require some staff. That <laughs> sounds complicated. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, the, the conservation commissions are creatures of the statute. Um, I don't know that, that that means they would be precluded from doing anything else. I just know mm -hmm. that it would be terrifying to me, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, we have two sides of what I think this, this, this town and in the similar towns are facing. We've already been talking about one of them, and I won't take a lot of time talking about the others, but it's it's the need to, to, to have some kind of viable growth, which I think admirably the state seems to have um, promoted the idea, as has the town, of having growth as much as possible in um, village districts. Um, I don't know how you make that work so that land is developed in those districts, uh, but it's, there's probably more that could be done to pay attention to that than... Until than we get done. sewer systems. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you do well, that. And, and, even, and you can't do that because most of those villages are already in river corridors. So yeah. Like and they're they're going to be flatly denied to, to continued development. You can't... Yeah. You, the dichotomy is... But that, that is a longer discussion. It is yeah. a longer discussion, yeah. but I do... I about that as we're discussing it. And, and yeah. I'm not, talking about things that are way outside of my pay grade, but um, it, it struck me listening to it that, yeah, that's probably true, but there is a limit to the boundaries of those river corridors, and there are hills around all of these villages, so maybe the village districts are going to have to be expanded somehow. Mm -hmm. um, and if, speaking personally, uh, but I think that following a little bit of the state's uh, policy views on this, it'd be a lot better to do that and have developments like the one that took place in Maple Corner mm -hmm. than to have regular eating away at roadside or... or can, I, can I plant a thought seed with you, Larry? Um, so when I, when I see the words education and training, mm -hmm. um, I immediately think of a budget and funding that gets spent on um, bringing in expertise to train the Conservation Commission and or the public as opposed to that being a budget that is then used for publicizing the work of the Conservation Commission. And, um, so I wonder if, if you know, uh, I can't remember how long ago, it was like maybe a year and a half ago, I think the Conservation Commission uh, initiated a, a, a meeting or a presentation from, from Eric to the select board at the time to go over some of the relatively uh, 
not new data, but um, but um, but information that or data that was informing some of like the habitat blocks and that sort mm -hmm. of thing that were getting um, uh, new attention or relatively new attention. And I think that that is is pretty um, pretty. That was a great presentation by Eric, and it I think it didn't cost anything. And, and it didn't cost anything. But you know, I think that there may be times when. When, when those types of presentations could cost something. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I would think that it would, I think it would be beneficial for the, for the Conservation Commission to be looking out for opportunities for presentations to, um, like that to be, to be given in, in the event that it needs to be paid for, that it's coming out of a budget. And you're actively engaging a dialogue around celebrating both the things that the funds are being applied to um, and impacts that are being made. Um, you know, you'd mentioned, you know, bringing the attention of new ordinances or statutes to, to the attention of the community. For, for me, that falls in the realm of the Planning Commission. Um, they're the ones who are living and breathing those statutes and ordinances. Um, so, you know, but uh, but I think that it would be beneficial for celebrating uh, some of the contributions uh, of the funds to specific projects, um, and more than just a, a table. I think in, um, in in the town report because I think the context, um, as you would mentioned about Memorial Hall, is important. It's important context to get out uh, in front of the public as opposed to just a spreadsheet that said $50,000 got contributed to this project and then leaving people to their own devices to sort out whether or not that was a worthwhile endeavor, you know? And so, um, but, but I agree with, uh, with Gabrielle, uh, the, the, the balance or striking the balance having a more kind of collaborative message, um, uh, from the, Conservation Commission um, that that helps weigh the those challenges um, uh, as I think something in the long term that would benefit the, the community and, and looking at it as uh, opportunities to spend community funds and educating or bringing expertise into uh, into the community. Yeah, um, we're obviously not the planning commission. Um, we hope, however, that with regard to the natural resources section of it, that we can be a, a helpful partner with them. Um, and Eric Sorensen has already agreed to help in that process. We're going to have, um, at our next meeting, which is November the 1st, um, perhaps the entire meeting will be devoted to a discussion about the coming town plan and um, what, what from a, conservation perspective um, is important about um, the natural resources section mm -hmm. in particular. I'm looking forward to working with Melanie King, who's been designated as the Planning Commission's point person for that. Um, as, as I alluded to earlier, I don't know what form the natural resources section will ultimately have in a new town plan, uh, but just today I sent to commission members uh, an email that had um, links to, uh, first of all, the current plan, and then our um, two uh, natural resources inventories that have been done since that plan was created. And then, um, importantly, to what's called a Vermont Conservation Design, which um, uh, some of you may be familiar with. It's, it's increasingly, and I think now definitively established, as, the, as providing the guidelines for important things like habitat blocks and so forth, but other things as well uh, that need protecting in the state going going forward. So I provided that, and then there's about three, or, or maybe more, I forget, statutes that directly impinge on um, land use and land protection. Um, um, Act 171 changed the planning rules to require um, town plans to include information about what uh, interior forest blocks, what connectivity blocks and so forth the town has, and also uh, to the town can indicate how it would like to increase the protection for those. 
and the statute expressly encourages towns to do that. Um, there's been a change in the, um, the laws concerning current use so that um, it will now be possible for certain uh, specified parcels of land that have a high percentage of ecologically uh, sensitive areas to continue to qualify for current use, but devote their land to um, passive management, old growth regeneration. Uh, it's called various things now, but that's really what it is. Is that in effect now? It is. Uh, it was passed uh, last year, and the effective day, and there were studies, as there always are, that were supposed to take place, which have been, which were done. Um, I think July 1st of this year was when landowners could uh, apply for that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, that's a major sea change, uh, even though they estimate that only about 15% of the, of the properties that, um, uh, that are in current use would even be eligible to think about this. And of course, and is that relatively few landowners would probably even want to do it, but if you want to, you can. And is that something you could help landowners with? Is that what you're thinking? Um, it's, it's possible. That's mm -hmm. one of the areas of, I think, uh, outreach to landowners in particular that the Conservation Commission needs to be more serious about than we have in the past because this, this raft of new legislation is, is potentially going to have an impact on, uh, on them. Um, yeah. Huh. The, uh, the last, the last one. I'm just, I may have skipped one of this, this digression, but so, yeah. something known as um, the 30 by 30 statute or mm -hmm. Act 59, which in which the legislature just this year um, um, set out a framework, to, mostly to do studies, but yes. in the short term. But, but basically to set out policy goals, very definite policy goals about um, increasing the amount of land in the state that is subject to conservation easements that's permanently protected. Uh, to get that, the goal of course is to get that to 30% uh, of, the, of the total land, not just the total forested land as I understand it, the total land in the state to get 30% of it uh, in seven years, um, in a in a protected, conserved status, not just forest, but forest that has a conservation easement on it. This and is a climate a big, resilience strategy. I, I assume this is a sort of a climate resilience strategy. Oh yes. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the whole ugly melange of things: uh, climate change, um, yeah. s species eradication. Mm -hmm. Uh, invasive species, um, you know, on and on, all the things that yeah. are facing our, our environment. Um, and um, it, as I said, it doesn't actually have much with teeth in it. Um, in the first instance, it's a, it's a study that, interestingly, they, they, they've given the Vermont Housing Conservation Board the kind of lead on working with A&R um, to First of all, to see if they can category can can list all the properties in the state that currently meet that conserved status in one way or another. It's a it's, it's a potentially big problem though because my understanding is the Vermont Land Trust is at present not willing to um, provide their services. Uh, maybe if you pay them a lot, I don't know, but provide their services for tracks below 200 acres, which is a lot of a lot of tracks. Yeah. Oh. Um, well, wow. you've got an exciting year ahead. But anyway, there's all that. Stuff and, there, and there are yeah. the, um, the occasional land transactions in sensitive areas. And it, as it happens, there's one, there is a not, a, not a transaction, but there is a huge property on the market on the west side of town that's um, right in the middle of the uh, interior forest block designation that the state has. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've informally contacted a couple of um, folks who are in the business of conservation easements, like the Vermont Land Trust, to see if there's any interest. But we're talking about a track that the asking price is one million six hundred and 
Yeah. $95,000. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm yeah, that's, I guess we'd better get back to the budget. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, so, so there's that. Please, please keep the, the, the uh, conservation fund at, at the... Uh, at the current eight thousand dollar level, I mean, if and, and I know it's difficult um, in a, in a year that were was better, we would honestly have been coming in asking, can you please up it a little bit because um, I, I think its its funds will will be used if we can find an effective, um, a feasible way to, to make that happen. Obviously, we're not going to be buying any million and a half dollar properties anytime soon. Now, finally, um, I'd like to, to say a word about, uh, well, two things. The weed whacker, first of all, we know about that as we've talked about it before. Um, the kind of joint effort that we had this year, formally under the Conservation Commission, and many of our members participated, but also with the Lakes and Streams folks, and, and, and several of them did as well, um, to, to go after Phragmites. So we, Clearly, we realized pretty quickly that we weren't going to get rid of frag bodies in cows. Um, but there might be ways that we could keep it in place, at least. But it's very time and energy intensive uh, because it requires going out often and water up to almost to your waist and cutting the plants. And you'd have to do it every year. So. I don't think any of us are proposing that the Conservation Commission long term be becomes by itself the invasive species uh, um, eradicator. Mm -hmm. um, just, just one plant took a heck of a lot of time this summer, but we were encouraged about how efficiently and quickly it's possible to attack a large pack of uh, patch of Phragmites uh, if you have uh, a, a good piece of equipment to do it instead of just... Quickly. So is that for one weed whacker? Well, as I... I'm not sure if I said it on here. I may have said it in the email that I, I sent that I think Barbara may have sent with you. Um, we're not really at, in a place um, where we're... where we would go out tomorrow knowing we're going to buy a specific piece of equipment there's mm -hmm. just it's just really complicated when you get down in the weeds on these things and a couple of other people's on our commission people on the commission have been looking at it uh, I've more than I have I think mm -hmm. but but I just you know have a, just a sample of a few that's right you things can. okay that yeah. that just show some but what I had suggested was that the six thousand dollar figure is probably enough to buy six hundred a couple of is. inexpensive ones which Often tend to oh. go for the or in the range of two hundred to three hundred. Are they underwater weed whackers? I don't understand. No, no, it's all above water. Okay. Um, there are underwater weed whackers, but not that anybody around here has ever seen, and we're certainly not asking for. But it. don't you have to cut the Phragmites at the base? Uh, you, they, you're supposed to cut it within four inches of the of the ground. That's true. So what's the significance of the weed whacker? Uh, well, the, the, I'm sorry, the weed... Because then the Phragmites is in the water, right? Right, right. But, no, not, not all of it. No, a lot of it is not, actually. Okay. A lot of it is in wetlands adjacent to the water. Or like on the banks. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, there's a big patch over by the uh, Adamant Co-op that we attacked pretty well this year. And do you do, like, community cleanup days? Community Phragmites days? Well, we've, we've, we've tried that. We got a little, a, a little um, leery about getting the public too actively involved. Um, we would, we, we could have probably done that with um, waivers, you know. But but all of a sudden, you know, the the, the the hoary thing about lawsuits and so forth pops up, and we had one landowner who refused to give us permission to come on and cut it. Uh, unless we sign waivers, and like a fool, instead of saying, fine, here, we sign the waivers, I tried to teach him why he didn't need to be worried about that, and that didn't go very far, <laughs> um, apparently. So we'll, if we go back at this, I'll, I'll probably take, we'll take a different approach with that particular landowner, because it's the one over on, it's one of the ones over uh, on uh, 
the North Callis Road that I think Jamie you're familiar with is yeah. pretty big. Um, so that's, we were encouraged enough by our uh, experience this year to think that it's not something we should just let go. We're not sure how we can, how we can expand it, um, at, at both geographically with Phragmites, but also with other plants. There's some real booger bears coming down, mm -hmm. coming down the pipe. Um, but uh, we've asked for this basically to, to be able to go forward on what we what we did this um, year um, and using the, the town's weed whacker with a metal um, blade on it was extremely successful and efficient. So this would give you two whack, weed whackers then if you were to buy another It depends on whether or not uh, it, my pers guess personally is that if we look at it, um, that those weed whackers are going to be inadequate for the level of use. Uh -huh. uh, that it's probably going to end up being one weed whacker that's closer to industrial uh, scale, mm -hmm. if you will, um, because little ones, you know, you need a big blade and you need a, a durable machine to, to do it. But that's our request for that. Now, finally, uh, something that I wish I hadn't said anything about any other things and kept all and was, could keep all my time to talk about this because it's it's something um, that I personally think has been a huge boon to the town over the years. I should I should say, uh, talking about these newsletters, that um, I've been a member of the. Lakes and Streams Committee longer than I've been a member of either the Conservation Commission or the Historic Preservation Commission. It's the first public thing that I did here, so I just want, want that to be on, on the table as I talk ab about this. But the en entire Conservation Commission agreed with the Lakes and Streams people who hoped to be able to revive these newsletters, at least to the extent that one a year could be published that, that this has been, notwithstanding what at least member of, one member of the former select board thought was a waste of time and money, that, that they have in fact been um, useful. Um, they're, in, in some ways, they're probably the best example of outreach to landowners about environmental matters that I'm aware of ever having happened in Calais. Um, there, the um, in the early years, long before I had anything to do with it, there had been some grant money that a parent was used in part for that. But that yeah, apparently that's went how away. Mm -hmm. um, and the select board, uh, as you would have seen from this list, which I think is reasonably accurate, um, the select board has in the past funded it, and for a number of. It's the most recent years in which it did before the funds were cut off. It was funding enough to, at that time, pay for two issues a year, which is what what had been the practice. Um, we're asking, or we're encouraging you, if if, if you can, to find the funds um, to um, for. A, $15,000, which would cover a part of the least expensive single issue that uh, could be printed, at least based on the estimate we received here locally. Meaning um, it would not be full color like this? And well, what it means is, um, and Noreen Bryan, who is the chair of it and has been for many years and has been a prime actor in all of this, which is why it is of such high quality in my opinion. She couldn't be here tonight. She's sick and I said, yeah, please don't come and infect us all. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Right uh, right it pro I asked if it would be a, a less fancy than this. Um, well, some corners would have to be cut, but she's committed to trying to raise any balance with, with funds, you know, from the donors from the community, I mean. Is she the one who would write it and put it together? Um, she would be one of the main actors, as she was in the past. Uh, several of the other folks who were active 
for a number of years uh, are no longer here. One of them now lives in southern England. Um, mm. And uh, but uh, but we've got the, the wherewithal to to get the operation going again. And next year could be a, a very important year to provide helpful information to owners of properties, especially with, with lake or pond frontage. Uh, if the if the planning commission's um, proposed zoning regulations, which we hardly endorse, um, are approved, um, it's, there's going to, going to be a need to educate the landowners about what the new standards are. And that's one of the things that these um, newsletters have historically been used for, I, I think, to good advantage. If you read them, they seem really useful and helpful in any event. Um, so that's one of the, that and invasive species on the ponds, uh, at least the ones that are pond adjacent, is also an area where good landowner um, understandings could be incredibly helpful in, in retarding the, the growth of these. Where's 15,000? I don't see 15,000. 15,000. 15, 15, huh? 1,500. It's, it's, not, it's, not it's not on this. It's, there's, there are a series of asterisks up here because our proposal was to take the money from education and training, uh -huh. at least on a one-time basis, and then add to that to reach a total of 1500 which is a couple of hundred dollars um, cheaper than a, four, a single four-page newsletter would be. But frankly, we would, we, would, we would try, even though it would cost maybe $500 more than that. Um, these things are much more effective when they're six pages rather than four. Um, and, and you don't want to completely cut out the pictures and things because that's what gets people's uh, attention. Pay attention. Yeah. It's been asked by folks, so there have been a number of questions I won't, maybe I shouldn't assume if you have any questions about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was prepared to launch into something else, but I may just be wasting your time. Yeah, I think yeah, I think we do have to wrap it up. Yeah. But um, questions? Anybody? I mean, the obvious to me is why not just do it online and have links at a variety of locations and um, and you know maybe print up a few. It doesn't need to be on glossy paper. People are really used to the fact that desktop publishing has changed. Mail has changed. I basically throw out all of my mail nowadays. Every bill I pay is online. Yeah. And I just think there are better ways to uh, communicate information. That's, that's, that's exactly what I was going to say something yeah. about, so thank you for raising it. Uh, we may be wrong, I may be wrong, but um, there's really only one feasible way in this town to try to get that sort of thing available to people um, over the internet, of course, and that's uh, Front Porch Forum. Well, we can post it on the town website with a link on Front Porch Forum. Yeah, uh, all, of those, all of those things would be possible, and I, and I recognize that to a certain extent, that I'm obviously presenting an old guy's perspective <laughs> on this. Um, but if the, if the criticism is, not enough people read it when it appears in your mailbox. Uh, I think I would argue, and I don't have any facts to support it, it's just, my, it's just my intuition about these things, that if you're talking about somebody seeing a thing in Front Porch Forum, first of all, they've got to be on Front Porch Forum. Second of all, they've got to see that day's issue. Third of all, they've got to click that link, and uh, which they may or may not do, and it may or may not stay with them. And I'm just and I think probably Maureen and the rest of the folks are just kind of old fashioned. I think if you've got it in your hand, you're likely to take it home. And if you take it home, you're likely to read it. And if these things are being thrown away by people who don't care in the post office, we're thinking maybe we can find a way to collect those, have them available for the public in a stand at those sites because there's yeah you can't dig through the recycling at the post office <laughs> <laughs> you can't dig through the recycling at the post office it's like a 
No, no, I'm not talking about recycling. I'm okay. talking about taking the, the exact opposite, taking them out of the trash cans, putting... Oh. No, but I was saying you can't rifle through stuff that people have discarded that is mailed to them. She works at the post, post office. Yeah, post office. I mean, yes. the outside post office. Could we, could we have post a sign that says, instead of... I don't know if you want to be dumb or sure diving time. outside of the post office. No, yeah, no, I think no, we no. should. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. okay, but I think Tegan's got I, children, I, and so this is a great conversation. Okay. I don't I, want to be diving in this. I want, it was already after 8 o'clock, and I'd like to turn, we still have to talk to Tegan. Barbara, did you have something quick you wanted to say? I wanted to, to just offer another resource if you wanted to do a digital newsletter which is back in March of 2020 when COVID hit, um, I met with the select board and the emergency management team and made the suggestion that it was kind of the first real community emergency we were dealing with. And I started collecting every, the email address of everybody who posts to Calais Front Porch Forum. So that was three and a half years ago. So I have over 1,100 email addresses wow. of Calais Barbara, residents. Wow. That's so cheeky. <laughs> I know. And we talked about it. I said, is that a breach of confidentiality? And the select board said, no. If somebody has posted to a front porch forum, they put their email address out there. Well, so I would highly recommend that we take that and we have a separate conversation about that because I think we can turn that into uh, an opt in newsletter very quickly. Mm -hmm. And people can then choose to opt in to receiving re regular emails from our commissions directly from the town. That would have huge value. Um, to circulating this information so that it's not getting buried through front porch forum. It's not getting necessarily, I mean, I still think that putting this information more cohesively like on the website and not as an afterthought, but like more deliberately uh, would be huge. But like having and maintaining a town-wide distribution list of emails that have opt-in like that that yeah. could open a lot of so, really interesting so over doors. the years i've thought of it as used for emergency management but like when john needs to reach somebody when when we need to reach a, a, a taxpayer whose check was returned mm -hmm. insufficient funds we use that list all the time just to contact a person mm -hmm. but with select board approval no, we, we, we can, can use it very easily just on a one-time basis like send out a notice saying if you would like to sign up to receive information from us for these reasons and if they've if they've clicked yeah we'd love to um you're going to get a certain percentage of drop off but so you could you could I love it. I love it. Yeah. You so we should explore ways of, of doing more, things more like that. that. Not even to have to do that, but just send something out with an unsubscribe button. Right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. No, and opt I can out. Talk, you, I can talk to you get, about yeah. the legality yeah, of that kind of yeah, stuff, okay. but you know, but sure. for sure, we we can develop I, that. That's very really easily. worth exploring. Yeah. 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 Jan, this, what did you? This would only reach people who actually post on it, right? Not just people who read it every day. Post. If they post. Okay. And my only comment, and this is more for Larry, uh, when they, in the times past, when the lakes and streams sent out a uh, newsletter or whatever, they sent it out, I think, to everybody in town. They did. Okay. I will tell you what some of us on the west side that are not lake owners did. We dumped it into file 13. Mm -hmm. So you might want to try to do a subset, if you're going to mail, uh, to only those people that are own property on the lake, uh, rather than the whole town, and and then you you've cut your costs of mail. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just a suggestion, but I, that's true. I I mean truly. And then it could be made available in public places around town for people to pick up. I would pick it up, but I would also read it if it came in my mailbox because I'm one of those people. Just to <laughs> counterbalance the throwaway people, I don't think. <laughs> I recycle. <laughs> um, it's, it's certainly feasible to go through the records and to be a pain in the butt, but to you know to actually figure out who all the landowners are. Wouldn't with a new map and say so? And Barbara's cross reference list. We totally paid three hundred dollars with our six thousand dollars map. On a, on a serious note, I, and I think back to uh, uh, Gabrielle's point, um, you know, I think that. The asking to fund uh, an expensive print once a year, multiple times a year from the 
commission is worth having a conversation about, but I don't think that you can have that conversation without taking a look at what the budget is for each of the other commissions and, and thinking about making equitable contributions to their budgets for, uh, for uh, communicating uh, their, their work. Um, we have really important commissions in this community. And I'd say even, even the uh, $8,000 investment towards the conservation fund, it, it goes towards important projects, but you know, back to the conversation about investing in a reserve fund for the planning commission, that is an important fund as well. And while it may not go towards preserving uh, lands, it's, it's an important part of a budget for making a plan and, and growing sustainably as a town. And so I guess my, my point in summary would be to, if we're going to fund something like that, mm -hmm. we need to be having that conversation relative to the mm -hmm. funds that we apply to the other commissions mm -hmm. um, and, and the communication efforts that we support, uh, support to the other commissions. Yeah. And with um, that, Unless somebody has a burning question, I'd like to give Tegan a little time now. That's pretty so. sharp. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. That was um, interesting. Thanks for that suggestion, by the way, about the, the annual report. I'll put it in the future. Yeah, and I just meant a table as in your narrative, not instead of a narrative. I, I'm not going to be able to address everybody's suspicions. No. <laughs> no, no, I know. But. I already looked at uh, it. Uh, I went through it in the trash. I like to hold on to the microphone. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Oh. Then, yeah. This is yours. Okay. All right. Um, Tegan's budget. There you go. I was on elections and general office tonight. Elections only has two lines it's got postage and other expenses. Um, I did ask for a lot for postage because we had three elections last year, most years we budget for one, uh, and postage has gone up significantly. Um, I'm not sure what it's going to be. I'm not sure if the post office is going to go up again. I don't know. It will. So that number went up. Um, election expenses, Barbara and I talked about, I didn't change that budget. Um, um, but uh, postage, are you expecting three elections? Do we have three last year? No, we have three this coming. Oh, three this coming. We're going down. I, I also notice you have another postage line further down. That is just for our general office postage. Okay, I see. As I suppose. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, any questions about the election spot? And then general office, I see that we used to have contracts and support just all lumped into two giant categories, and they have been parsed out into the individual things, which is probably a really good idea. I left those as is. Since Sandra parsed those out, she probably took directly from um, what we've done in the past, so I didn't mess with those too much. Just a, just a quick note on that is yeah. it'd be good to just have it in notes that, that where it went, just um, for us. <laughs> as far as? In the notes column, the contracts and support, like you said, it got doled out, but just if it, that could be it like. It did, just a, instead of contracts, now it says Nimmer contract and COTS contract and IT contract, and instead of support, it's oh, Nimmer support okay. and IT consulting. Um, IT consulting did go up a little bit. We call them a lot. We have a lot of questions. There are always a lot of questions. And the more people we're going to have in the office, as we have a new treasurer and probably a new town administrator and maybe, you know, as new folks are coming on board, we're, we're going to have questions that we can't answer. Um, education and training have bumped up a little, again, because we're going to have, I'm still going to be relatively new. The treasurer, I don't know what kind of experience they're going to have, but they're going to be new to our office. Mm -hmm. The town administrator, I'm assuming, is going to have some training as well that they will require. We're all going to be in that same boat of needing to learn a lot more. Uh, maintenance for the town office. I, it's a great building. I don't see us needing more money on that. Generator maintenance we took from the Brookfield contract. Uh, facilities maintenance wages. Currently, the Gospel Hall Award makes two oh eight thirty five a month, and most years gets a bonus, so I budgeted for that. Mm -hmm. um, phone and internet did bump up. I'm not sure how it's all going to shake out uh, as CV Fiber goes forward, uh, so that's sort of a solid estimate. Um, 
And then advertising, I kept the same. I, it, it was really high last year, but we've been advertising for a lot of jobs, and I'm hoping by the time we get to this fiscal year, we will not be needing to advertise mm -hmm. quite so much. So you think we could uh, reduce that one then? We, we could probably reduce it some. I, I kind of just left it as it was the year before, but if you want to make a note, I'm comfortable yeah. putting it down. I'm Let's hoping see. we won't have to advertise nearly so much. Is um, the co does Front Porch Forum, is there like a monthly subscription or do you get have, a free municipal No, we don't have subscription. They let us post as much as we need yeah. to this municipality. Okay. Well, I get cut off sometimes. <laughs> you, I beg them and they Word come they get, they'll give me three more for the month. Then ask me to do the posting because I don't post nearly as many times. But Tegan, did you say phone and internet will go up so we need to budget more than 5000 No, the 5000 that was estimated before I think is a good, it's gone up from the 4000 Oh, from the 4, original. Plus. Okay, yeah. I see. Okay. Uh, postage, I'm not sure why that got boosted to 3000 this year. That was, we only spent 500 last year, so I brought it. I'm happy to bring it back down to six or 700. I don't know why it was that high, if anyone had a reason. Yes. Mail in the we time. have the elections this year when you're going to be mailing out ballots. And but that's, I have a difference in elections. Oh, so for right. elections. Yeah. Where, what about mailing the town report? Where does that come from? That goes with election. elections. Elections? No. no. So you do have to mail that out. We do have to mail that I, tax bills. That's I'm assuming we have the five hundred and seven from fiscal year twenty three. Yeah. I don't see it changing dramatically from that. Okay. Um, but I also wasn't sure why why it has gone up so much in the past year. Um, the supplies seems good. We oh, probably, there might have, wasn't there some special ballot you had to that that the town had to pay for. But that would be under elections. That, yeah, that would have been under elections. But it was, but it was additional and probably unplanned for. Which are you talking about the land, the yeah, the, the zoning, the zoning the one, the pipe pipe yeah. thing that got canceled? That's going to be looked in. No, it was. Um, it'll come to me. Hold on. They're supposed to take care of part of that. To... Sorry. Do you want me to wait? Or do you want me to no, keep no, don't wait for this to um, remember. Office equipment, I kept the same budgeted amount. Heat and electric, I put it down because it was only 3200 last year. I don't see that changing with an asterisk on that, which I will come back to. Um, town office security, we don't have any. And I keep getting asked why not, uh, since that's where actually most of our most valuable things are. And I don't have an answer for people. So We don't have an alarm? I thought... <laughs> <laughs> and by that I mean it's super secure and it's the most secure building in the whole town. Um, no, we have this. So we have one here and we have one at the garage, garage but not there. Yes. Oh, interesting. Hmm. I assume we did. Yeah, we should yeah. fix that. Yeah. Uh, software. It was, uh, sorry, just yeah. getting back to because I remembered. It was that the towns had to incur the cost of mailing every general election ballot. Yeah, that's why I put the. Well, I put postage. Yeah, that's why I had the increased postage under elections. Are you thinking of a different cost? No, that's what I was okay. trying to remember, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to remember, though. Always like feel free yeah, to jump in. Yeah, I feel in. much better, even though. <laughs> um, when it comes to software, I kept it the same. Uh, Jordan and I have a meeting with RB Tech next week to discuss kind of where we are what we need to be replacing because we're supposed to be replacing things as they age out every mm -hmm. couple of years and then our server needs to be replaced every five to seven years that's a big chunk of change that's why we contribute to the tech reserve fund um, the other option when it comes time for server replacement is going to the cloud it's also a chunk of change last time i talked to the folks at rv tech they said it nets out to similar the annual cost of being in the cloud versus the every five to seven years cost of doing the server. Um, but now that we are here in the land of CV fiber and our internet is fantastic, yeah. now that it's a reality, it's a question we need to talk about as in what, what are the pros and cons, what do they recommend moving to the cloud, what do they not. So that's something I'm not prepared to talk to you about yet, but we are scheduled to meet with them next week. Are you talking about the uh, reserve fund right now? 
Yeah. Yeah, the software and the reserve fund. The software the and reserve. Tech world. Um, so how many computers are we, will we be maintaining? Is this just for computers and printers? And, and the server. And the server. That's that big black box. Okay. And how often do we replace the computers? I think every five years okay. is the recommended amount. Um, I don't know the last time we replaced any. Oh, we haven't since I've been here yet. We got the new one for John in the spring. Do you remember the last time anyone got a new one? Yeah, no, I don't remember, but my architect has all of that. They track okay. it and they So we, it. we have some kind of a capital budget. It's, it's a, a rotation, rotation schedule. schedule. Okay. Yeah. Good. So that's why, I don't know why that number went down to 2,500 last year, but I brought it back up because if we're going to be paying for a tens of thousands of dollar server and continuing to update our computers, then we're going to need to bring it back up. So, um, well, so, so, but if it, if you pay for, um, like, the, say we choose to be um, in the cloud, yes, and then it's just steady every year, the budgeting is just a little We may not easier. need to do a reserve fund if we do it that way. If we are in the cloud and everything is pretty consistent year after year, I don't know that's a thing to talk about if we decide to make that step into Mm. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Um, yeah. Oh, and then the last, the asterisk oh, is uh, air conditioning. Barbara and I are tough. We are fine. But, uh, <laughs> archivists say you should keep records below 78 degrees. Uh, our server was over 80 degrees this summer and it's not supposed to be. And we had a little fan on it and we were doing our best. Our records probably got into the 80s. It's not great for them. Uh, so I called up Efficiency Vermont. Um, he said given, he hasn't seen the building, but given the parameters I gave him, uh, he said a dual inverter AC unit, four or 500 bucks. They make them now so that the part that drips and is loud is outside and it's just the cool air inside and he's got one in his house and he loves it to pieces. Um, he said if we were going to be renovating the town office and we wanted to look at one of the wall-mounted heat pumps for dehumidifying and air purifying and offsetting the heating bill and air conditioning, all those. That's great. Those are awesome. But that's 10 times the cost of an air conditioner. So that was kind of his advice. If you don't need it and it's, you don't, all those bells and whistles aren't going to do anything for us, just stick with the air It wasn't even over all that hot of a summer. So imagine like it was not. if it had been like... 90s, 100s. And that building is in a cool spot. It's got the same orientation as my house, so it's in the shade. It doesn't get a lot of sun. Yeah. It doesn't get the sun till later in the day. I better talk to John and Donna, and they were like, when we built that building, it wasn't getting this hot in Vermont by a long shot. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't even think about putting air conditioning in. We would need it. It's on a concrete slab in a shady spot. But we yeah. do have an energy assessment coming out with some possibility of. Oh, they're, they're doing that building yeah. too. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're when, doing the town office too. Yeah, yeah. and it, but isn't that a very recent build? The town office. Yeah. Oh. It, what, it didn't it get energy? Off, it just paid off the <laughs> twenty-year loan. The last time I was in there, I thought somebody had said it had been recently done, but um, I'm glad to hear that it hasn't. Because if you're like, if it's getting eighty degrees on the server, then so there is a need to reevaluate that. Very young. What is it you? What's the source of heat now? Propane. Yeah. yeah. It's in the floor, right? It's, yeah. Yeah. It's like delightful in the vault when it's cold outside. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a radi It's a radiant slab. Yes. So the other thing to look at right now is, and I'm surprised that it's very frustrating that efficiency Vermont's not talking about them, but there's there's the air-to-air -air heat pumps that they are now like not really incentivizing all that much but there are air to water heat pumps which are direct replacements for for any hydronic system and they work really super and they're also like it's one of the highest incentives that they're still offering it's like eighty five hundred dollars for the installation of a unit which pretty much pays for the compressor and it does domestic hot water it does radiant floors it does uh, blower units as well for air conditioning. So well, find somebody who's willing to have an air to water heat pump conversation. Yeah, I'm emailing myself to do that right now. 
They're much more efficient. And they're way more efficient. And there's a Canadian company that just that makes them, and they're rated down to negative 30 degrees um, and are still operating efficiency, efficiently for generating heat. Um, it's just okay. like, like mind-boggling. The maker knows a lot about that. Tegan, thank you. Any questions? Any further questions for Tegan? Thanks for thinking that about that. How are you doing? Uh, I mean, are you feeling settled in and like you're getting the job? And most of the time, yeah. Uh, today I got to educate someone at a bank, so I felt like I needed something. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay, we'll just move on to reports. And um, Anne, what about roads? You got anything to tell us? By the time we get to this, it's always like so few people. But just what I've already shared with you, guardrails are ordered, pre-weathered, the way we like them. Um, the company has to install guardrails for the state contracts first, and then they work on the town. So hopefully that'll be soon. We might have to have a conversation about Moscow Woods Road if we get snow and we don't have guardrails, because we may not want people, non-local traffic, going up and down it. Um, we are probably going to keep the dump for now until the single state geologist can come and look at our actual dump and it's possible. You mean you're going to keep the transfer station the at transfer the transfer station center. down at the rec field. <coughs> Thank you for clarifying. Um, and we are going to put some gravel in the driveway to kind of limit how many it gets on the weekends. Um, and the company, Perry and Sons, us, does the trash pickup actually likes that location and they say it's working out well for them. So they're happy to stay there. Um, but you do have some people that really want to get back onto Moscow, so. Oh, okay. How close is Singleton? Singleton, we had um, a bit of a kerfuffle with the uh, brackets that went around the 12 foot pipe. Um, the people that made it had made the brackets, they were set too far forward so they didn't tighten. So they did a rush order and said new ones that were the exact same and wrong. <laughs> and they oh, 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 oh. So Jay Hutchins got a welder and they welded them. So they've been tacked on in the first place and they're sitting at the top of the culvert. So it's going to be, um, yeah, so they got it done. So they're still moving along. So hopefully, because they would like to be done as much as we would like them to be done. <laughs> yes, we would. So that, yeah, just dragged it out a little bit longer. And I think those are, That's yeah. it. Nope, okay. for now. Um, Gabrielle, I asked you in email, and yeah. we never talked, if you... So wait, was that the road report? I'm sorry, oh, I, yes. I went to the restaurant. So um, did you get the FEMA report yet? No, do you have a FEMA report? Yeah, and Scott is here to deliver it in person, so let's, so let's let Scott do that, and um, it's brief. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, today was the deadline for listing the um, roads. <coughs> the dam is considered a road <laughs> the, that we're going to ask for reimbursement for. And so we, we're, Toby and Charlotte and I met with uh, Michelle this morning. We've been meeting with her weekly. Um, and I, we're pretty agreed that we've got a complete list, about 60 items on it. How, how many roads? Well, I'm just, um, I have a very, uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a messy draft of a list of the roads. They're about 60. About and 60. The, the amount that we've paid out is about uh, 1.5 million. We've, we've actually spent about a million so far. Um, is, that, so uh, the, that is owed is 1.5 million. We're going to ask for reimbursement for 1.5 million. We'll get 75% of that. It's, it's a long, complicated, drawn-out, obnoxious process. <laughs> Obviously, the question is, when are we going to see the money? And nobody will commit to that. I, I, I talked to Kim at the state today, you know, and she is normally crystal clear and transparent in everything. And she couldn't really come up with a way of letting us know. So it'll be months. We're, we're going to have to hit that. We're going to have to borrow that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we, we, we made that deadline where um, we have all the documentation for all the, for all the roads. And it's just a question of um, uh, 
clerical work, getting uh, all these 60 or so rows into little separate folders in the exact, exact, exact way that Fino wants to see them. Toby and Charlotte and I are going to work tomorrow, probably a long day uh, copying and putting things in folders and trying to make progress. We, some of our bigger ones, we, uh, uh, Moscow Woods is over 100,000, um, this is over 70,000. So we'll focus on the big ones first, try to get the reimbursement going for that. Um, but we're trucking along and getting there, but you know, there's no greed at the end of the tunnel yet. <laughs> yeah, wow. Amazing work. Yeah, thank you so much. Toby has just been awesome. He's, yeah, he's I know. Of it and can, uh, has a great mind for collecting, knowing the knowing what we need, and getting getting hold of it and putting it in the same place. I thought Moscow Woods was about five hundred thousand. Did you say a hundred thousand? Yeah, there's a couple of different. Uh, what do you? Think? It's Hutchins. I signed a check. For I that haven't been seeing the billing for that. That's what I think. Yeah. There's, there's a little. You don't forget the four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, we knew it was going to be enough. just, and that was just transferring woods. Yeah, there's, just a there's four. We're, we're asking for uh, reimbursement for four incidents on Moscow Woods. Oh, okay. Um, bank up, up above Fletcher's. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wash out the huge big wash out, and then the slides the banks, and wash outs yeah. between the dump and town. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a long road with a lot of... And you said so far we think it's going to be one and a half million, not the 1.7 that was originally estimated? Well, um, we're committed to the names of the roads, not to the amount of money yet. But the way Toby's been estimating it, it's uh, 1.5. Yeah, okay. That's where we're at. And um, we're going to continue to meet weekly with Gabrielle and try to complete the biggies as soon as we can. Um, then, I mean, this is, and this is just, <laughs> this is just Gabrielle helping us put together what she expects FEMA will want. Uh, she says, to tell a story, and then that has to go to some bureaucrats in Washington and they'll pick away at it. Yeah. And send it back to us and ask for more. And I think you mean Michelle, right? You're talking about Michelle, Michelle helping you? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, I'm not that helpful. <laughs> so. <laughs> cannot take credit for that. <laughs> it is getting late for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're very impressive. Away. Yeah. Thank you. And we don't need Jeff Kanter yet. Right. Right. We haven't had to call on Jeff. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. yeah. Were you able to put together an ARPA report? Yeah, um, I can do that very briefly. So um, what this is referring to, gang, is that the town of ARPA received, the town of Callis <laughs> received an ARPA grant for $479,590. And, um, and basically, uh, there are some time periods where it's easy to do things with that ARPA money, which is basically can be used for any general government function, the municipal ARPA dollars. And so the town of Callis um, has attributed most of it, allocated most of it. There is a remaining um, balance that is yet to be allocated. And this all arose because Sandra just realized the town did not have an ARPA file really of any kind. So she asked me to tell her everything I knew about ARPA, so that's what I did today. And I sent her the two key files and I'll walk down with um, some papers and see if she wants any of the rest of it, which is not much. I didn't inherit anything from um, Denise or the prior select board, so I just um, had this very useful but rudimentary spreadsheet that Sharon Fannin made and it says you know what the amount is what the project is and when it the select board approved it and um, some notes on it and a contact person and um, yeah so she did that after they accidentally overspent it and um, 
yeah, it's pretty handy. Glad I have it. And so, um, but back to the, the time frame issue, which is that the Curtis Pond Association had asked if some of its expenditures could come out of its um, ARPA fund instead of the CPA other fund. And, um, and the answer in this particular case is no, because uh, it has to be done within the fiscal year. So, um, for example, in March, when we had Wendy Wilton here and we did the thing where we took the um, 50,000 for the uh, but radar speed signs. Highway ra removable highway radar signs, and uh, that got essentially on the ARPA spent and then made to come out of the highway fund. And that's why we now have still a remainder of ARPA funds of like 33,000 yet to be um, committed. And furthermore, there is, Sandra has been working with Katie Buckley from Vermont League of Cities and Towns. And Katie said, we should by the end of the year, even though you don't have to commit ARPA until December 31, 2024, Katie Buckley is giving the town the advice that it should figure out what it wants to do with the 33,000 sooner than later. And furthermore, that there is a very specific wording of a resolution that the select board, when it's ready, um, will do for all of these items um, just to um, be really sure that it's being done the way the feds want it to be done. She wants us to go back and do it for each one, even the ones yeah, we've already so. spent? Oh, okay. Yeah, there's only the only one that's already been spent is CB fiber, and that was 200000 okay. Actually, most well, of emergency it... emergency management has been spent. The, the, um, the generators. Right. Yeah, there's a small um, amount that has been spent other than the 200000 The but, COTS hasn't been spent, the in historically... Yeah. 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 So, so, so there was two hundred seventeen thousand for the FY twenty three reporting that I did. So not that much more than the two hundred okay. compared to what's left. Well, you so I should sit down then, or maybe we can make a list of those for the next meeting, and we can do all those. Yeah. It, yeah. So, um, it, and it might. Let's circle back with Sandra about this this issue of the thirty three thousand, which because there is a cash crunch. There may be a really good reason to just maybe you know, something in like that we talked about. Well, actually, the mapping system Legal fees. or the spending of we spend every penny that? we have on flood recovery and and not FEMA money too. Okay. In the in the pot, okay. so there are. But anyway, so that's that yeah, is the ARPA report. Can Rose, you please give me the number at the very beginning of your report. What you said what was the total of ARPA. Yeah, sure. Four hundred seventy-nine thousand five hundred ninety. Five ninety. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Gabrielle. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna skip my homework. This Jamie week. has some great news. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> um, Curtis Pond. So, after many, many meetings and conversations with the engineers and historic preservation folks and dam safety and all kinds of other players in the permitting process of the Curtis Pond Dam. Um, we've come up with a potential redesign, sort of a whole different conceptual plan. Um, which would involve, instead of a giant concrete wall on the pond side, it would uh, re remove but then rebuild something similar to the existing riprap wedge on the downstream side of the dam. So it would maintain just the top two or three feet of stone facade and the rest would look much like it looks now. Um, and it would include a underground um, pipe that went under the bottom of the dam, elbowed up, had a low water emergency thing so you could lower the pond as needed, and then a pipe up to surface level that would act sort of as a second spillway. Um, 
So this plan is still being engineered. We're still in conversations with Dam Safety, with Historic Preservation, with Army Corps of Engineer, all the people. Uh, we don't know yet if it's a definite possible, but it's a very likely possible. Um, and the current estimates are that it would save us about $400,000, mm -hmm. which would be, bring the project back into a stone's throw of the budget we were expecting and have raised funds for. Um, the engineers at DNK are very optimistic that we would be able to get all the pieces in place and still begin construction June 1st, 2024. So that's awesome, and it is news to me. And um, as one of the, we yeah, just haven't had a camp yet, we haven't seen each other in the last 48 hours, which is when this all took place. So kudos, that's freaking awesome that there's there's an option and, a, and, a, and an alternate that is, yeah, that's great. So to that point, Sandra was kind of asking me the status today, and I gave her the wrong status because I didn't know her status. <laughs> so that's okay. But the point is, she um, she has to know if we're going for the bond. Right. She got to know like tomorrow, so she can start working on it. Because it takes. It's, but but we can't. It's going to be another week or two. She's. I mean. Isn't it so likely that she's gonna that we're gonna put in the bond? Well, she could start the application, I suppose, and then if we can't do it, we can stop. I mean, we right. What's the deadline to withdraw? Yeah, until up until it's issued, I believe. Okay, so. Let's see. I think so. so. She. What did she tell me this morning? I don't know. If she was talking about deadline to withdraw, but um, no. My memory yeah. is that yeah. I think it'd be fine. Tell her to go yeah, ahead. I think it's, for it's the full looking pretty optimistic that we'll be able yeah. to get it done this year. Are there additional design expenses with changing the design of the... Mm, or are they... They would be minor. <clears throat> they would be minor. It's not a whole redo of the work that's done. Um, and and are we waiting to hear back on whether or not it needs to be rebid, I guess? Yeah, I'm still uh, waiting. I should know in the next day or two um, if, if we can, we either would have to rebid it or present an opportunity to both people who bid to update their price based on the design change. Um, and that's that's the direction DNK thinks is most practical and most commonly done. Right. Um, but we're waiting on a town attorney opinion. What about it. historic preservation? Wouldn't they not love the riprap? So they don't love the riprap. Um, we had a long meeting with them. They also really don't love that the original design went from a five-foot spillway to a 10-foot spillway. Mm -hmm. um, and so this new design would maintain the five-foot spillway. Um, and it would eliminate the need for the large concrete wall sticking up above the entire width. And so they didn't offer any formal opinions but my impression from the meeting was that they're open to either option. They don't love either option, but they're not going to stop the project over either one. Mm. Well, the, will the dam that's there now still be there after the riprap is added? Yeah, so... Well, then that would be a good selling point for historic preservation because they... Right. They would love that, I think, yeah. Yeah, but we're we're you, leaving the river. You'd only be able to see the top few yeah, feet of it, it'll but it'll right. be there. Yeah, yeah. yes. Worst comes to worst, you can remove the riprap and take a look at the original. Exactly. <laughs> to to that mean. point, if they're going to hold they feet mean. to the fire for several hundred thousand dollars worth of <laughs> interpretive historic <laughs> preservation, but not contribute any money <laughs> towards achieving <laughs> that goal, their choice is make right. the project so untenably expensive that we can't do it and we lose the dam, or 
yeah. find a path forward yes. where it's a cheaper dam that we get to maintain so, in its original but, structure. Barbara has something to say. <laughs> I'm really glad you and Sandra had a chance to talk about the the uh, the bond work that she needs to do because that's a big, big, big project for her. I'm wondering, given her hourly rate and her current workload, if it would be prudent for her to talk directly with Jamie and get a more thorough update about what the status is before we tell her to start working on it? I, I don't know. I think if we agree that we're, it's okay, go forward, and she gets that message, I mean, it's not like the amount's going to change. The bond is what it is. Right. So, and, I mean, but, but I mean, I think a 10 minute catch up yeah. with Sandra yeah, yeah. is I'll very well, well That's worth a good it. Idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I also need to make a, a motion for, to approve the acquisition of a new oh, yes. uh, computer workstation for oh. the town administrator. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So I have a list of uh, computers that I will provide to Tegan. Um, so I'm seeking approval for the acquisition of a laptop for not to exceed, I guess, well, let's call it fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. Um, Good. I just want to chime in. No one has played that laptop that's sitting there. No one uses it, uh, so oh. we can repurpose it at will. I it might not be what we want for this particular project, but I'm just. Letting you know. W would it be good to have a backup computer in the office? We have the one that the um, that the researchers use, and it literally only gets used by vault researchers. That's oh, the oh, only thing it gets used for. Yeah. So it's that's kind of a back. I think of that as the backup computer. If we ever needed one for anything, we would pass it. On. Okay. Well, short of the specifications of that being inadequate, then I guess. You want to amend your motion? Yeah. yeah. Why don't you start from the beginning? Oh, this man. Uh, <laughs> I don't have an eraser. I just don't care. We'll do it. At the beginning, I, I guess. I just didn't so. think short of uh, the way you said it didn't quite work. We could just add if needed. Uh, yeah. There you go. The if needed. Not to exceed 1500 Not to exceed 1500 It's <laughs> if needed. Oh, sorry. Second. Second. Jamie seconded. Thanks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Done. Thank you, Jordan. Do you have any other IT stuff to mention? Mm, no. No. Um, collective, oh, collective bargaining team. I think we can take that one off for permanently. Um, shed. I, yeah, let's let that go. Okay. In anything <laughs> okay. further? Yeah. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.